So the old man drew this design here, the devil with the girl, and uh, the ink wasn't even dry on the illustration board, and I had him do it on me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my father, Sailor Barney Sr. Uh, my oldest brother, Howie, used to go by Sailor Barney Jr. So, being a carny, we traveled our whole lives, and some of the shows, like Ray Hoffa, James E. Strait shows, uh, we tattooed uh, and had back end pieces on a carnival. Back end piece was the, the motor drones, the girl shows, the freak shows, the illusions. Uh, front end was the games and rides and all that stuff. So we tattooed up and down the East Coast and part of the Midwest as far as carnivals go. Everybody in my family tattooed all over the country. Wherever we went on vacation, you brought your tattoo kit, you sat in somebody's house or somebody's shop. As tattooing got popular, definitely it was somebody's shop. So if you needed stencils, other than that, you did freehand work. When I started in the 60s, uh, everybody knew how to do freehand work because we had acetate stencils. If you accidentally rubbed it off, you had to look at the stencil and zip, zip that little line in. So everybody knew how to draw freehand back in the day. Uh, the young guys today, they got thermal fax machines. If they let that dry on the skin, sometimes they're done with the tattoo and that stencil is still on the skin. They don't know how lucky they are. <laughs> and uh, we had to make our own needles. Uh, back in the 60s and before, there was a five round and a six flat. Six flat, if you went sideways, it's a straight razor. You had to be real careful how to tattoo. Today there's numerous uh, different uh, forms of, of needles, all the way from a 36 needle all the way down to single needle. Uh, black and white tattoos, I think Jack Rudy was the, the first uh, guy to make them popular. Uh, my old man went coast to coast almost every year, so he uh, come back to my shop in Rochester, New York and tell me all the good stuff that's out there. Uh, back in the early 80s, I only took my old man to one convention. Then he went on in, in uh, Bakersfield, California. He went on his own to a, a convention and I think one other one. But other than that, everybody knew Sailor Barney Sr. We traveled, he traveled, and it was a handshake and you're sat down in somebody's shop all the time. Uh, P.A. Stevens, uh, in, in, uh, now he's, I, the last I knew he was in Seattle. And he was across from the governor's mansion in California. Uh, Mike Malone, uh, my old man naturally knew all the old timers. Uh, Charlie Wagner helped the old man quite a bit when he first got started with tattooing. Uh, Coney Island Freddy, Huck Spaulding. Uh, the more people you're around in any art, if they're willing to help you out, the more you learn. And if you're smart enough with these conventions, keep your mouth shut, watch the people tattoo. Go home and try something that you think you like doing or it might be easier for you to do. You go home, you try it. If you like it, it becomes part of your way of tattooing. You don't have to guess no more. Uh, when I started, when the old man taught me, I tattooed my old man's way. As you met more people, you, you change your styles through the years. Every artist does, even uh, painters, sculptors. Uh, the old man came out with the coastal machine, so he hustled them. Uh, when he didn't work for me in Rochester, he could go back out to the West Coast and he had a little truck, uh, like a bread truck with a little machine shop in, He'd sit outside your shop and physically put a machine together to your likings, outline a shader, uh, whatever you wanted done to it. Uh, he even lightened them up, he'd mill them out so they were lighter, the metal wasn't as thick, so they get a little hotter by doing that. Uh, people did that to Jonesy machines, uh, not realizing how much they'd be worth these days. <laughs> They, they alter themselves. But the old man taught quite a few people how to tattoo. And the last guy he taught, I really don't know his name right now. Uh, he lives in uh, overseas. I'll be talking about that uh, a little later. Uh, I'll find out his name. And I'm in touch with him through Facebook. 
he was the last guy my old man broke into the business in um, Bakersfield, California, where my oldest brother was living at the time. And my oldest brother was in a, like a rehab hospital before he passed. And this guy was sending him money, bought his uh, electric scooter for him, just out of respect that my old man taught him how to tattoo. Uh, that's very honorable, which in, in the younger days, people stuck together. You tattoo business, you were a kerny. And uh, my old man passed that down to all of us. We all have uh, somewhat uh, ethical lives. Uh, young guys today, it's very cultural business. Uh, although in the 70s, I remember Van Nuys especially, because my oldest brother Howie was there, uh, there used to be uh, the original drive-bys and a shotgun uh, shell would come through the window. That was normal practice. Uh, way before this big tattoo boom, as I call it. Uh, the old man tattooed uh, California, was Texas, ev everywhere in the country, just about. I don't think he ever went to Alaska, though. Uh, he, did, he did like the warm weather. So it was hard for me to keep him in uh, Rochester in the winters, and he usually went either to Florida or to the West Coast. And he hustled machines, did a little tattooing here and there, different people's shops. When he passed away, uh, all his uh, friends that he made through the years, only one guy, Huck Spaulding, uh, called me with, with a sympathy call uh, that he just found out from one of the uh, old man's friends who called him to let him know. Uh, I ain't heard nothing from anybody since then other than people that wanted some of his flash or, uh, you know, his, if I had his thumbs, they would have took his thumbs. Everybody wants a piece of sale of Barney. Uh, the coastal machines, uh, that would keep his name going by himself. He, he just handmade them, he trying to, like Paul Rogers made his machines handmade. My old man started out with a cast and where Paul actually cut the metal for the frame and then filed it down to where it belongs, not using uh, machinery. The old man started with a, a, a aluminum cast machine and there was no uh, aluminum machines back in the day. It was a very, very super light. I grew up with all the, the old uh, Owen Jensen's, uh, Paul Rogers, uh, all brass uh, or bronze machines. And if they were chrome plated, they were that much heavier. But I think personally, I use aluminum now, but personally, a heavier machine will keep your hands steadier uh, for the longer lines. That's just my belief, not everybody's. Uh, uh, the old man. Uh, well, I can't tell you how many people he broke in, but every couple of years he broke in. I remember he traded a pickup camper at Syracuse, the New York State Fair, for a tattoo kit. And this, that following winter, we were supposed to go teach the guy, John Shiloh. He was a fire reader in a freak show. And uh, we were saying goodbye to him when we were pulling out at the end of the fair, and he was tattooing in his camper. And he put a big uh, Harley uh, bar and shield with wings and said, Hardly Davidson. 